So if you see yourself that way, is that I'm here to give. I'm here to give of my love and my energy and my light and my compassion. I'm here to give. Then the universe takes you seriously. When you see yourself as somebody who always has something of value to give into life, the universe says, well, this is a very serious player here. You know, this is a big, big person spiritually. Now, I understand. I get it. We get hurt. Everybody does. Everybody has a past. Everybody has a family. Everybody has exes. I get it. I get it. You know? But, but it, did it ever occur to us that that did not just happen for us to keep telling the story endlessly about that? You know, and when I say telling the story endlessly, I mean when we're telling the story with no intention of healing it. We're just telling the story because it's kind of our thing that we tell the story, right? See, it's, it, it, is, it is the, really what that is about is it's the path to going deeper spiritually. Right? You know, just finding new victims to tell is not going deeper spiritually. <laughs> you know? It's like, you know, we look in our, you know, we look in our phone, scroll through the phone and say, okay, who can I take hostage now? <laughs> you know, that I can tell this to one more time. Because that really doesn't move us forward in life. It doesn't add to our light. It doesn't allow us to express more in a greater way. Because, you know, what we have to understand is that life is very much like a mirror. It reflects back to us, you know, what we deep down, what we deep down feel and believe about ourselves. So this is the thing. It's not what you say you believe about yourself. It's what you deep down feel and believe about yourself. That's what the universe is always giving back to you. So, okay, all right, things, we've been through things. People did it to you. I get it. I get it. Okay, I get it. But why do we continue to perpetuate that? What value could we possibly get out of it other than that we protect ourselves and keep ourselves from ever being vulnerable again? See, that perpetuating it is what has to, has to stop. You know, that if we could, if we could shift our thinking and say, OK, I have to accept that there was value in this, you know, that this, is, this has taught me something. And if I continue to feel like a victim, it has not taught me anything yet. <laughs> and so the invitation exists, would I like to go a little deeper so I could see what was I supposed to get out of this? What was I supposed to learn out of this? How is this contributing in some way to my spiritual growth and my spiritual evolution? Because this was not just a random occurrence in the universe. You know, in the Old Testament, I love the story of Daniel who gets thrown into the lion's den. Now, Daniel is a man of prayer. So he does not go into the lion's den uh, armored, you know, that he goes in completely, completely vulnerable. But the truth is, he's not alone. See, that he is one with God. He has a rich inner life. And that's my desire for all of us, that we would all have a really rich, meaningful inner spiritual life. So Daniel knows that he is one with God. And so all night long, what he's doing is that he's not like running around trying to avoid the lions. He's courting the presence of the divine within himself. He's knowing that that presence is more real. The presence of spirit within him is more real than these big, hairy, ugly lions that, that are facing him down. And what happens is that the lions go to sleep. And Daniel is absolutely fine. You know, so it's about us going into the situations that we go into and changing our perception of ourselves as rather than seeing ourselves as, oh my God, I'm just this poor, helpless, hopeless, hapless, vulnerable thing to one with God as a majority. I have to know that the presence of God is right here in me now and it goes with me into this situation and it will guide me to think and say and do whatever I need to do for my own highest good and greatest healing. I was talking with a man the other day who, um, he works for the Red Cross. And so I said, wow, that's interesting. You work for the Red Cross. How long have you been doing that? He said, oh, about 18 years. And how did you come into that? And he said, well, you know, um, after the Oklahoma City bombing 18 or so years ago, he said, I started, he said, he said something like a line was crossed in me. And I just knew I had to give something of myself. You know, that this was the direction things were going. I had to be a part of something that was helping, that was healing, that was assisting or serving in some way. And so he started to volunteer, and he was volunteering more and more and more. And finally, they said to him, they said, would you like a job? <laughs> you know, and so, and so, so, so that was it. But, but he didn't go in for a job. He went in to be of service. 
you know, to give of himself, to, to put a little light into what looked like a really dark situation. And, and, and now he's, he's wound up having his career working with the Red Cross, and it, and, it, and it really has heart, and it has meaning for him. 